So welcome everybody to this latest GCSE revision video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over a topic test related to transformations. Now there will be a copy of the questions in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at before watching this video and going through the answers. Get started on this transformation one uh, topic test. So looking at question one, if I just zoom out, it says that we need to reflect the triangle on the line y equals minus one. So what we need to do first is actually plot the line of y equals minus one, which is a horizontal line, which should be drawn with a ruler, but roughly is there. And then we just need to reflect this shape so it's two away from the line. So it's going to start there. And with a ruler, and again, not promoting good practice, that's where the image is going to be. So you need to draw your triangle just then. Just make sure that your lines do go on the lines. If you want to shade it, that's entirely up to you. Moving on to question two. So question two says equilateral triangles are joined as shown. And it says 2A that triangle BCE is reflected in the line of ID. Circle the triangle that maps uh, to, that it maps to. So the triangle we're looking into question is this one. So this is our starting triangle. Uh, let me just highlight that in pink. And it's reflected on the line ID. So this is our reflection line. And so if we reflect that shape, that triangle, the pink triangle onto that blue line, it's going to reflect to this triangle here. And then we just need to go for which correct option that's going to be. And that is obviously our fourth option. The next part then says triangle BC is rotated 120 degrees clockwise about point F. So we're still looking at that pink triangle. My center of rotation is at point F, so it's here. And what we're going to do is rotate this shape uh, 120 degrees. Now, although 120 degrees is not like your typical uh, 90, 180, 270, etc. The fact that these are hexagons means that every single turn is 60 degrees. So that's 60, that's 60. So here, the actual triangle where it's going to be reflected is going to be this triangle here, which let's do a different color, let's do an orange, is going to be E, G, D. So it's going to be this triangle here. And that's for part B and that is our second option. Now the question 2C it says triangle BCE is mapped to the triangle of KID by the enlargement of scale factor of minus 2. Mark the center of the uh, mark the center of the enlargement on the diagram. So in terms of which triangle is we're actually looking at so triangle KID is going to be this triangle here. If I just do that in gold and let me just shade that in just so that we know what we're looking at. Now what we need to do is we need to find and mark the center of rotate uh, of enlargement. So what we need to do is connect the opposite points. So if I join a line from E to D and I join a line from C to I, you can see that they meet at this point here. And if I then just get rid of those lines, this point here is my center of enlargement from this triangle to this one. Uh, and again, so what we're doing is this is our first one and this is our second triangle. But there, this, this point here is where my center of enlargement is going to be. Then moving on to question three, it says that we need to describe the transformation that maps shape P onto shape Q. So we're going from this shape to this one. Now for this hopefully you would spot that straight away that it's a rotation and with the rotation we need to do the direction and the direction of this is anti-clockwise of 90 degrees or you could say clockwise of 270 and then for the third mark I just need to state where the center of rotation is going to be now again you could easily guess what this is with a bit of tracing paper or you could actually work this out now to accurately work this out what we need to do is first of all find join two corresponding points together so for example let's just get a ruler out 
and I'm going to show you how you can actually do this properly. So if I join two corresponding points together, so let's go for this here, and let me just neaten this one up, like so. And then I want to go for another one. And what you want to try and aim for is to that cross. So I'm going to go for that one, and I'm going to go for, let's go for the, this corner here, and that's going to be there. So just join two corresponding points with straight lines from those shapes. Now, the biggest mistake that people make is they think, oh, it's where those two lines meet, but actually that's not going to work. So what I need to do is I need to do a perpendicular bisector. So to find the center of rotation, uh, draw a perpendicular bisector of these two lines. And so if I do perpendicular bisector of this line here, uh, which is going to look something like, uh, let's say like that, and then I do a perpendicular bisector of this line here, which is going to look something like that. You can see that they meet at this point here. And this is my center of rotation. So if I just mark down what that coordinate is, so that is at 5, uh, I've got the uh, coordinate wrong, so it should be at 5, 7. And obviously in my diagram it's a little bit wrong, which means my lines are wrong. So let me just quickly edit that out. Edit. So, but the general principle is exactly the same. So here, uh, this is where it should be. So if I just draw a mock-up of where my perpendicular bisector should be. Um, oh, it's definitely not correct. And again, not the easiest doing this on computer. Like so. And what you'll find is that this point here is where your center of rotation is, which is at 5, 7. Then moving on to question 4a, it says translate the shape by the vector of minus 3, 2. Now, obviously, I don't know why there's a fraction. It should just be minus 3, 2. So if I pick a point, I'm going to go 3 to the left and 2 up. So that point's going to be there, and I just need to then trace the shape. So I should get something that looks like that. Now, for question 4b, this is looking at vectors. Now, with vectors, all I need to do in multiplies, this is just going to be 2a plus 3 equals 8. And I'm going to end up with 4 minus b equals 8. And what I just need to then do is solve these two equations. So 2a equals 5. So a equals 5 over 2. So that's just 5 over 2. Or if you want to write it as 2.5, that's fine. And then here I've got 4 minus 8 equals b. So b equals minus 4. And then just need to write that in here. And jobs are good in. Then for question five, it says A, B, C, D uh, is a is the square shown, and it says for each part of uh, circle uh, the points or points that are invariant under the transformation. So invariant basically mean don't move. So when I perform these transformations, which of these four points A, B, C, D do not move? So with the first one, I'm reflecting this line on x equals two. So I'm going to reflect it on this line here which basically means that those two the square is now going to be here that's going to be D that's going to be a so which two points don't move well that's just going to simply be B and C for question 5 it says ABCD is rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise about 0 0 so where that is that going to be well there's 0 0 it's going to reflect rotate so it's going to look like this so if I just move the letters so D is now going to be here, C is going to be here, and B is going to be there. So which two points have not, and then it's reflected, sorry, on the y-axis. So here is my y-axis. 
and that's where the shape is going to be. So which two points have not moved? Well, it's going to be A and D. I don't know why I've circled, oh, uh, sorry, C, uh, which is going to stay the same. So it's A and C. So moving on to question six, it says, describe the transformation that maps A to B. So we're going from this triangle to this one. And as you can see, in terms of what it's been transformed to, it's definitely going to be an enlargement. We're going from A to B, so the scale factor has been divided by three, so it's going to be minus a third. And then we just need to find the center. And how do we do that? Well, I've just got to pick two corresponding points. So if I join that with that and this with that one, I could then find that the most accurate where it should be, and again, my lines aren't correct, but on yours it should be, it should be at four, five, for the three marks. Then moving on to question seven, which is our last question. So it says triangle A is enlarged by a scale factor of two from the center of minus four and four to give triangle B. Triangle B is then rotated 180 degrees about two, one to give triangle C. Work out the transformation that would map triangle A onto triangle C. So what we need to do here is basically find triangle C first. So let's first of all perform, oh, I don't know why I'm crossing it out. Let's just get rid of that. Let's pick a highlighter. So let's first of all, let's do this. So I'm going to large triangle A with a scale factor of 2 with my center being minus 4, 4. So from this, I then need to enlarge the shape. So if I pick a point, uh, let's go for this one. So that's minus 1, uh, sorry, 1 minus 1. So enlarge that by a scale factor of 2, it's going to be here. And then I just need to draw shape triangle B. So it's going to be twice as big. Uh, so it's going to be there and twice, twice as wide. So this is where triangle B is going to be. Then what I need to then do is rotate that 180 degrees around 2, 1. So I mark out where 2, 1 is going to be. So 2, 1 is here. And then what I then need to do is rotate that shape. So using a bit of tracing paper, rotate it, the shape. And what you should find is that that triangle should, triangle C, should be here. Again, drawn a bit correctly. Now what I need to do is I need to see what transformation makes me go from this triangle A to triangle C. So we know that straight away it's going to be enlargement because obviously it's changed in terms of size. It's got a scale factor, or well it's twice the size, and it's also been flipped so it's going to be minus two. But then the only thing I then need to do is find the center. And how do I do that? Well, all I've got to do is just join two corresponding points. So if I join this point, well, let's go for the other two ones. Uh, so let's go for this point here. So that's going to connect with there. And so if I draw a line like so, and then join another line from this one to this, and it's just where the two lines meet, which is at this point here. So there is my center of enlargement, and that is to zero. And there is my answer to the final question.